Kevin, is it more likely the Colts over or underachieve? Well, as I sit here today, it's going to be an underachievement. Now, now Matt Ryan's an absolute stud. He's still yeah. playing at big-time level football-wise. But the Colts, I don't think, are as good of a roster as I kind of felt they were mid-November last year, right now. I mean, they don't have a left tackle right now. They don't have a number one bona fide tight end right now. Their starter retired in Jack Doyle. And they don't have a number two or a number three wide receiver. And their number one wide receiver, Michael Pittman, is good. I still think there's some question marks if he's your, your, your bona fide one. And so until and, and they got to do all that without a first round pick this year. And so how do they supplement this offensive roster that run blocking wise, this offensive line is phenomenal. And with Jonathan, T Jonathan Taylor as an MVP candidate, they're phenomenal. They're not great in pass protection, and they don't really have a plethora of pass catching options. Now, Matt Ryan will be more accurate than Carson Wentz, which will lead, lead to a better performance by those receivers, but it's still not in that conference. It's still going to be really difficult for me to sit here and think that Matt Ryan, unless they get some supplemental pieces via the draft and maybe some extended weeks of free agency, that it's going to be this team that all of a sudden can go and beat, you know, some of those top four or five teams in the conference. I will tell you this, Molly. I do not think that after they moved on from Carson Wentz, I did not feel great about their op uh, options of or chances of winning the division. Matt Ryan still gives them a very solid chance to win that division in contention with the Tennessee Titans. Mm. Yeah, I mean, I think that you're right about the conference being tough, but I don't think the division is that tough. So I guess whether they're going to overachieve or underachieve, I would say overachieve because I'm setting the line. I don't think people think they're going to be able to take that division from the Titans. And I think that's hard for us to have this debate where they overachieve or underachieve. If we don't determine what the expectation is. And right now, I think the expectation is probably a wild card. And I think they'll overachieve because I think they can win that division. You pointed out all the holes that they have. And you also pointed out that there's still time to fill, to fill them. But the big uh, acquisition that they made was a quarterback. Most important position on the field. And I know that Matt Ryan is an MVP, Matt Ryan. And Carson Wentz was not terrible for them last year. He was just terrible in important moments. And I think the veteran, the addition of a veteran smart quarterback like Matt yeah. Ryan elevates them in those moments. And I think that gets them past their division rival, the Titans, and they win the division. They're not going to go in a deep playoff run, though. Yeah, I guess it's all about what your expectations are. You know, if, you, if it's funny, it's I guess not funny, but ironic. If you had asked this question and we went back in time to week 15 last year, the Colts were in many people's eyes, certainly mine, the team that no one wanted to play. Like they had just gone on that month stretch where they hammered Buffalo and hammered Arizona. And you're like, this team's playing as good as anybody. And I think the question you have to ask is if, when Matt Ryan comes in, like, d does he not do the terrible left-handed interception against Tennessee to lose the game or the, the crosser that Byard picks off, does he not do the last two-week stretch against the Raiders and the Jacksonville Jaguars to play so poorly? But he also was a quarterback that played good football for a three-month stretch last year. And I think it's a fair question yeah. to ask. Whether you don't like numbers or like numbers or whatever, do the Colts, do we feel really confident that Matt Ryan is going to come in and go, 28 plus touchdowns and seven interceptions yeah. or less. Like I don't. By, that would be a very good the, performance. Yeah, by the numbers and like if you go QBR by all situations, they're right. pretty comparable. They're mm -hmm. not very different as far as far as quarterbacks are concerned. Right. But I do think that part of this is psychological. Honestly, I agree. like I think part of this is that building. And I promise you that building feels better now than they did even when they first acquired Carson Wentz. From what I understand, he was he didn't have too many fans when they brought him in there. It was one guy that was pushing for him, and then he got there. And I think that's a bad situation. That's not fair to him. Dan, no, Dan let, he makes those let me get in here really quick. Against them. Yeah, because, yeah, uh, Nick, sorry to cut you off there. Speaking of Carson Wentz, I want to ask you this. Who do you think is in a better situation? Do you think it's Carson now being in Washington? Because I think I remember you had Washington winning the division. Obviously, we know it's the NFC least. Or do you think now it's Matt Ryan and Indy? Yeah, I think it's Matt Ryan and Indy, honestly. I think that Carson Wentz's situation is good, but I think – that Carson Wentz has been so many places, and even here, it's not too many people. I live in D.C. There's not a lot of excitement about having Carson Wentz. And I think that's part of the problem. It's the baggage that Carson Wentz brings along with him. So he's going to have to come up big in some big moments and do it consistently for people to think differently about him. But I do think that 
what they have in Indianapolis, they have something on their offense they can build around. They have a dominant rushing attack, and they have a really good front seven on the defensive side of the ball. Those are things you can build around. I don't know that that's the same thing in Washington, especially with the injuries that they had to Chase Young and understanding that there's one running back in this league that is as good, I think, as Jonathan Taylor, and that's um, a healthy Derrick Henry. So I think that situation in in, um, Indianapolis is a little bit more attractive for Carson, excuse me, more more attractive for Matt Ryan than Carson Wentz in Washington. Yeah, I would probably agree with Dom that it's probably better in Indy. You know, obviously I think that they have to answer some of those questions on their team that I pointed out. You know, Molly, something that we don't, like, it's so difficult to really talk about on television. It's also difficult to try to, like, quantify and figure out is, I think that the basic difference, and, and Dom made this point, is Indy has like an adult now at quarterback. Like they just have, yeah. a, a, you know, I don't want to like, maybe that's not the best phrasing, but they, they got a, like a, a, a ice in his veins leader. Like a guy that is every day he will walk into that locker room and be a leader of men. And that is not easy to do. And sometimes you pay guys strictly to be able to do that. And I think that the more you hear and the more you find out, that's probably where Carson has, some of his biggest um, his biggest lapses is is like having that daily ability to go in and do that. Right. I don't know if he's going to be able to change that in a year, and I don't know if that's going to be something that he personality wise is going to be able to really wrap his arms around and make it a strength. Because right now it seems the more you hear about the situations in Philly and in Indy, and we can't get kind of information on that, Mm -hmm. the more it sounds like a weakness. And I I would tell you that talent-wise, I would say Carson Wentz in Washington with Terry McLaurin and Curtis Samuel and and Antonio. I'd tell you that, but I think with the the whole totality of the importance of playing quarterback and the leadership role of it, I think it's probably Matt Ryan and Indy. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.